Hi everybody, I'm Amy from From the Cauldron and in today's episode of Dye Time I'm going to be dyeing this raving. I've got here 19 grams of Jacob Top which I have dyed in a previous video and this is the stuff that I obviously didn't dye. Uh, it's been soaking in water for probably about 15 minutes now and what I'm going to do today is use up or use some of the stock solutions that I have left over from other projects. I've got seven different bottles out. I'm going to start off with this one which is Cyan. It was a 1% solution. Uh, this is from DT Craft and Design. It's a um, it's an acid dye. I'm just going to drip some along there, some along here. Now what I want to do is get these bright colours on here and then I want to spin this at the end of the video to see how the colours, if they blend together, um, what happens. Now I'm not entirely sure what this one is because I didn't label it. Always label your bottles, <laughs> but I didn't. I think this is either scarlet or red from DT Craft and Design. I had um, made this solution for another project that I had planned on doing and then didn't do. I will still do it, but I just ran out of time and other stuff happened. <laughs> this one, I think, uh, this, is, this is yellow. I'm pretty sure this is yellow from DT Craft and Design. Uh, and I want to get these patches of solid colour. I'm just curious to see if they blend together when they spin or what. This one is magenta from DT Craft and Design. I'm not really going in any sort of pattern. I'm just dropping um, bits of dye over. That didn't make sense. I've got here some leftover purple pop, which is an acid dye from Dharma. I've used this in a few videos. I've got loads of this. This is a bleeder, so I'm not going to use too much of that one. I've got two more bottles left. I may as well use all of them. Didn't think I was going to. I've got here leftover fluorescent safety orange, which is also another acid dye from Dharma. Again, this one's a bleeder. So I'll just do a little bit there. Oh, and the last one is some fluorescent fuchsia, which is another acid dye from Dharma. These fluorescent colours are big bleeders, so I'm not going to use too much. <sighs> Alright, now what am I going to do? Now, this obviously isn't on any heat at the moment, and it's not, there's no acid. Uh, just debating what do I do now. I'm going to add some water. This was from the uh, pre-soak. Let's add all that in. Grab one of my dedicated dye spoons. Move it about a bit. I'm going to turn the heat on. There we go. Turn them down so they don't start boiling. Um, I'm going to keep a very careful eye on this. I don't want this to boil because uh, I don't want it felting. So I'm just going to add one. Start off with two tablespoons of vinegar. I will probably add more. It looks like I added quite a lot of that cyan. And I think that yellow is all but disappeared. I'm just gonna just tap some of this through. I think I might add a little bit more yellow because that one does tend to be the first one to disappear. There we go. Really add that yellow in, give it a good chance to stay. What colour was there? Oh, that was more of the cyan. And yeah, I'm just going to let this simmer nicely. Hopefully all of the colour will absorb to the fibre. That red is a really nice red. But if it doesn't, I do have a couple of pre-soaked um, skeins of yarn that I can use to get any extra dye. So yeah, I'm going to leave, leave this. Come back in about half an hour, I think. 
to see how the dye is absorbing to the fiber. It's only been about five minutes, but I can see already I've <laughs> used quite a lot of that cyan and it is muddying over here with the red. It made quite a nice brown actually, but I think I used far too much of it. So I've got here 10 grams of 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, dyed at a 1% depth of shade with the fiber reactive dye from Dharma called Feeling Shroomy. It's, and I'm just gonna put it in here, just at this blue end, to try and absorb some of that cyan. And here is a 10 gram skein of the same, same yarn dyed with a 1% depth of shade of Scarlet Fiber Reactive Dye from Dharma. And I'm just gonna lay this over here to try and absorb some of that extra dye. I know I used far too much. I tend to do that, don't I? But hopefully some of that yarn will absorb some of that extra dye and leave sort of this area relatively unscathed by the blue. I should really learn my lesson when it comes to blues. Little goes a long, long way. <laughs> one day, one day I'll learn that lesson, but clearly today was not that day. In my defense, I was pouring the dye on with my left hand and I'm right-handed. I don't have very good control on my left hand. I'm very, very right-handed. So that's my defense for today. <laughs> that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Right, I'm gonna leave this and come back in probably about half an hour. It's been about 15 minutes and I've just topped up the water because it was getting quite low. And I noticed what was quite blue here has just completely washed out. And it looks like all the blue has gone into this yarn. So it looks like the superwash yarn here has just sucked up all the dye, leaving this roving with just a little bit of dye left. So what I'm going to do is just shift that over a little bit because there is still some pink up that end. And that those pinks do take forever to, to actually bond to the yarn. There's always a bit of pink left over. So I'm just moving those there, moving this down. Looks like some of those, yarn, those colors have stuck, which is great. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit more blue dye directly to it there. And just hopefully that blue dye will stay in the, in the roving here and not get sucked up by the, the yarn. I think I might add a little bit more of that red as well, just because they were getting quite muddy. Oh no, that's yellow. This is why I need to label, here's the red. I'm just gonna add just a little bit, not too much. Just a little bit of color there, just a few drops, actually onto the fiber. And hopefully that will be enough to really make that a nice red without making it bleed too much. So again, this needs to come up to a simmer. I'm gonna keep the water topped up because I don't want it to dry out and burn. This has been on the heat for a about 40, 45 minutes-ish now. And there, while there is a tiny bit of blue left in here, most of that color is in either the fiber or the yarn. It's quite interesting. I had a, quite a bit of blue here, but it doesn't seem to be any blue in the fiber. It sort of moved across here. And I think most of it's probably got sucked up by this superwash yarn. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, what I think I'm going to do actually is I'm going to add just a bit more blue along here. Just, just that. I'm not I'm just going to just tap it through. This is quite warm. I'm going to make sure this yarn is well out of the way. I'm just going to leave it like that. Turn the heat off. And I have another one of these trays. So I'm just gonna put this on top, try and keep the heat in and just let this cool down completely um, over the next few hours and then I'll wash this. Okay, this is completely cooled down now. 
can see there is still a tiny blue tinge in the water but I'm not worried about that that probably mean, that means that um, there will be a bit of blue bleeding from here I'm going to start with the two skeins of yarn as they're nice and easy to wash so I'm just running this under cold water uh, and just going to add a little bit of washing up liquid because these are quite vinegary smelling this will just help remove any of that extra blue get rid of that vinegar smell uh, it doesn't look like there's any blue runoff actually, which is great. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to hang those up to dry. And now we have the slightly more tricky task of um, washing this roving. There's a bit of blue there. That seems to have stuck on there. I don't want to actually run any water on top of this roving and risk felting it. I'm just going to put a little bit of water in this tray and let it soak. Oh, those little bits are come off. That's odd. I've not seen dye do that before. I don't really know what's happened there. I'm just going to try not to squeeze this too much. Just let the blue, let just let this soak in some water. It doesn't look like there's really, oh no it does, there is some blue coming out of this. Okay, I'm not, not going to add any washing up liquid to this because that will just make it a lot harder to wash out. Hopefully this will just help, help some of that blue come out. Let's see. Yeah, it's looking better already. Being very, very gentle with this. I'm paranoid about belting. So I'm gonna do this a few more times, just let it soak and then gently remove the water, fill it up again and just keep doing this until the water is clear, until I'm happy with uh, with how this looks and then I can let this dry and here is the finished fiber and yarn now I'm gonna have a little look at the yarn first of all so move that out of the way this yarn was originally dyed with this one feeling shroomy and this one was originally scarlet I really really like how this has taken up that blue and it's made sort of a, a dusty blue and you can still see some of that feeling shroomy underneath. I think that looks fantastic. I really like it. And this has just soaked up uh, just everything. And I'm not quite sure how that has become lighter. <laughs> but I really like that nice little burnt orange area there. And there's there's blue patches. There's... All sorts in this it's a sort of muddy but not not bad muddy it's a good muddy of lots of different colors and such a difference between the original colors that these were dyed the thing that puzzles me with the fiber is this end I dyed to turquoise where's the turquoise now no not turquoise it was cyan where is that blue it's disappeared I mean there's bits here where the blue has mixed and sort of over here it's created a green with that yellow so the blue has moved and there's sort of blue over here but where I put that blue it's disappeared that's really strange because I I went in and added extra blue on that just that bit moved the yarn out of the way and it still just moved to the rest of this fiber. I don't know what happened to it. I don't, I don't know why it didn't stay where I put it. So this is a huge puzzle. 
Um, but let's have a little look at the rest of the fiber. We've got, uh, that was the red. I think it's, yeah, I think it was red. And the yellow, there is a bit of yellow, but I didn't manage to save all of that. That's, yellow is the color that will disappear first. It will blend with other colors. And it's made this really gorgeous green. And here we are with some of that blue. <laughs> and uh, that was purple pop, I think it was mixing with there. And it's just created some really lovely blends of these colors here. I love this. This section here is me. Purples and greens and blues. This, These are my colors. I really love this. I love that color. I'm not quite sure how I made that, that nice blue, but I love it. And I, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to replicate that. And up here is some of those pinks that's, I, I think it looks, really lovely this and now I'm going to spin this fiber to see how these colors sort of blend out um, if I can keep any of these sections of colors or if they were just all muddy together uh, it, this was what the experiment was all about I'm just starting to spin this up now and it is spinning nicely this is really lovely fiber to spin it's my favorite so far I've not experimented with many fibers but I've found Jacob by far and away to be the easiest for certainly for a newbie like me. I separated the fiber into approximately two equal strips and then I spun each strip. Now I'm going to try and spin or ply these two together. This is my <laughs> poor man's lazy Kate. And here is my finished yarn. I tried really really hard to try to match up the colors on this and for the most part I think it worked. If we have a look, if we sort of go through the, the yarn, you can see sort of the purples are with the purples, the greens are with the greens, the this red is with the red. This should be turquoise, not turquoise, cyan. I still don't know what on earth happened here. Uh, I'm gonna have to dye some yarn with that cyan to make sure that it's not um, it, that we can, still can die with it. Overall, I am really, really happy with how this turned out and the colours didn't muddy together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do please click like and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Do you know what happened to that cyan? Because this is really bothering me. I just, I just don't know what happened there. Uh, let me know if you do. <laughs> I publish a new dyeing tutorial every Monday, usually around 6pm UK time. So make sure you've got notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much for watching.